I re-record a lot. Just so you guys know. You guys think I make mistakes in my videos. You should see the mistakes I make outside of my videos that I catch. <laughs> Thanks for helping with that, guys. All right. So today we're going to be talking about mining pool payment methods. And this should be able to help you determine what the best mining pool is for your specific situation. A lot of this can get quite confusing. So if you have questions, you can hit me up in Rocket Chat by clicking the join button down below. And this is the important part and why we're reiterating this. You need to go to the membership tab on the YouTube page homepage for Son of a Tech and then scroll down and you will see a section that says connecting on social media and it will have the link for the registration URL for Rocket Chat. I hope that that will be helpful and you guys understand it, but if you still have issues, you can email me at blindrun at son of a tech or you can hit me up on Twitter at son of a tech. All right, so mining pool payout methods. Well, what does this mean? Essentially, if you're a miner and you're a smaller miner, you'll never be able to solo mine a block. You'd have to have a significant amount of luck. Now, there are payout methods that do include luck and we'll be covering them today, but because you are mining with a bunch of other miners, the pools have to determine how much you have put in as far as work to then determine how much they're gonna pay you for however much Ethereum the pool has mined, or in some cases, not even that. So let's get into it. The first payout method is PPS, which stands for pay per share. Now this functions as stated, miners are paid by the pool for each valid share that they submit to the pool, whether or not the pool finds a block. Now, this method isn't quite used anymore. It's used in a couple places, but not really. It had a couple really large flaws. One was, is it paid miners out no matter what, even if the pool didn't find a block. Meaning that the pool wallet that basically takes in the payment from the Ethereum network and then pays it out to the miners could just run out of Ethereum, theoretically, depending on the size of the pool and so on. Now, the other problem was it was really susceptible to, of course, pool hopping. Now, the way pool hopping worked is that because it was based on shares, people would basically jump between pools near the end with large mining farms or larger mining rig operations, get a whole bunch of the shares because the shares weren't limited, and then peace out and go to the next one, take the payout from each pool. So you weren't really punished for jumping pools over and over and over again. And if you timed it right, you could basically increase your profits. And this was a method that a lot of miners used early on. Obviously you can't really use it as effectively now as you could in the past or in the early days of mining Ethereum. The next is PPLNS. And this is used by the largest mining pool in North America, Ethermine. And that is because, well, it protects pool owners and it also stops people from pool hopping in this manner. Miners are paid a portion of the block reward and transaction fees that their pool finds, but only when the pool finds a block. And that's how it protects the pool owners from losing any money. Next, shares are defined by a fixed amount of shares with a variable N. Because there's a fixed amount of shares, if somebody comes in at the end of the block being solved and tries to accumulate a whole bunch of shares, they'll get capped by the end shares and kicked off basically. They won't get as many shares as they could potentially get by running them up on a PPS, for example. So that's kind of why PPLNS has been such a big deal for mining and it really solved those two major issues. It is getting a little outdated and there's been some new ones that are coming along that we're gonna talk about. But what it also does enable is the pool owners to keep their fees lower. And the reason they can keep their fees lower is it only pays out when the pool finds a block. The downside to that is for the miners is that there is a significant amount of luck based on the amount of blocks the pool actually finds at any given time. So to solve that and stabilize the minor payouts in a more predictable fashion or manner, the next payment method or payout method is called PPS Plus, which is pay per share plus. The most popular pool running PPS Plus is probably Spark Pool. For North America, it's gonna be Hive On, which I've used and I really enjoy using. And it 
basically function as stated. Miners are paid by the pool for each valid share that they submit to the pool, whether or not the pool finds a block. However, that's going to be based on the block reward of two for Ethereum as an example. Now, there are transaction fees, and this is where pools on, of course, PPS had a lot of issues with keeping up with. And so miners are also paid a portion of the transaction fees that their pools find based on the PPLNS method. So only when the pool finds a block. So to give you guys an idea, to explain this further, how Ethereum works is that when somebody submits a transaction to the network, they can increase the fee that they pay to the miner to basically signal that they want their block solved first or their transaction on the block solved first. And that will basically pull it up to the front of the line. Well, those fees increase and increase and increase depending on demand on the network. So miners want a portion of those fees, especially if you're talking about today where the base reward is to Ethereum and the fees can get all the way up, pushing it up to a 13 Ethereum block reward. And it wasn't very cool to, you know, not have that option. But if the pools were like, okay, well, we're just going to pay it out no matter what, whether or not we find a block such as on PPS, what happens then is that the pools run out of money because let's say block one found 13 and then block two found four and the pool had to pay you out based on, you know, just your shares across the whole thing. Well, they're gonna they're gonna end up running out of money right that's just kind of how it functions so pps plus aim to basically combine the advantages of pps and the advantages of pplns giving miners a more steady income but also pre preventing issues for the mining pool operators of running out of ethereum in their main wallet Finally, we have FPPS, which is fully pay per share. And this one that has been taking off lately uh, due to the Binance pool. Now, we can talk about Binance pool for US users and international users and the caveats to it because this payout method is great for miners, but it comes with some heavy taxation. And we'll talk about that. So it functions as stated. Miners are paid by the pool for each valid share they submit to the pool whether or not the pool finds a block. In addition, miners are also paid the expected transaction fees of the network based on the past 24 hours, whether or not the pool finds a block. So as opposed to essentially the transaction fees not being averaged out on PPS, it averages out the transaction fees over the past 24 hours and then still pays the miner out whether or not they solved the block based on the average transaction fees. The problem is this is still pretty risky for pool owners as far as compared to PPS. And so the taxation of that obviously comes with a heftier fee in most cases. But in the case of Binance Pool, it gets really interesting because the fee is actually quite low at 0.5%. At least that's what it appears to be until you look into what it requires for you to sign up for it and how you get paid out. Because initially with Binance Pool, right now as it stands, there is not a Binance.us pool, even though they have pools in America. You can only sign up for it at Binance.com, which obviously kicks you out if you're a US resident. And then in addition to that, where it gets even more sketchy is that you have to sign up for an account to use it and you deposit whatever you mine to the Binance application or your Binance Ethereum address. Of course, you can cash that out and send it somewhere afterwards, but it is that middleman that worries me to say the least. All right, so finally, I wanted to give you guys a tool for, of course, reviewing pools and determining what is going to be the best for your specific situation based on location and so on. And that can be found at miningpoolstats.stream. As you can see here, Spark Pool is number one, not really based in the US. It is PPS plus with a 1% fee and has a minimum payout of 0.1 and so on. Ethermine is PPLNS and is 1% fee with a 0.1 minimum payout. It used to be 0.05, but that was changed recently. 
So if you wanted a PPLNS option with a lower minimum payout fee, you have Nanopool, for example, and you can kind of go through these. Keeping in mind that with PPLNS, if you're mining and you're a miner to it, the more the hash rate, the better off you're gonna be as far as dealing with the luck portion of it because you are required to find a block to get a payout. And then we have Hiveon, which is a 0% fee. That's because primarily they get their revenue from their operating system, their Ubuntu distribution, which we've talked about on this channel. You can check out the referral link in the description below. And they have, yeah, no fee and a 0.1 minimum payout. They do have a function there where you can make your rigs free for a 3% fee to the pool. I have tested out both with the fee and without the fee. And funny enough, I was making the same either way. So you can just go ahead and use the fee and not pay for Hive, I suppose. Just that's going to take some more testing because like I said before, like anytime we're talking about mining pools and mining just in general, there's too many factors to, to put in to actually say like, this is the best method. All right, so then finally, I just wanted to talk about Binance Pool. It's down here, a 0.5% fee on FPPS is insane. That's a, just a hell of a deal. My worry there, like I stated before, is primarily that there's kind of a weird situation going on mining to it if you are in the US. And then there's the weird situation of having to actually create an account, which means they hold your account data. What I can tell you is they don't require user information, meaning like Prime XBT, which we've mentioned before, you don't have to put in like your name, your address or anything like that at Binance.com. <laughs> so do you boo. All right. Signing up is still kind of a downside as well as of course, having that Ethereum go to the Binance pool. Now there are different levels. I have not gotten to the next level, but it does appear that at some point I could possibly point to my own wallet address, but I don't know what the requirements are. How much ETH do I have to have in the pool? How long do I have to mine to the pool before that works? And obviously being in the US, that's nothing I can really test fully. So if you guys have, you know, somebody that can shed some light on it from outside the US and we can do a little Q and A, I think that would be super helpful. We can get you guys more information. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday. <laughs> if you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here. Or, of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.